Good morning, Oklahoma. We're out here at the Purebred Beef Cattle Center at OSU today. We've got beautiful sunshine. It's the kind of day that gets us excited about looking at spring calves and thinking about how those matings we made last year worked and thinking about marketing decisions on those calves down the road. Today, we're gonna to talk specifically about genetic prediction and EPDs. So what is an expected progeny difference? By design, an EPD tells us how a future offspring of a parent is going to perform relative to other parents in the breed registry. EPDs are the result of generations of those in the purebred seed stock industry collecting data and performance information on calf crops within contemporary groups, turning that into their respective breed association. We take that data and statistically analyze it to arrive at the additive genetic merit prediction that takes on the form of an EPD. If we think specifically in the last 10, 15 years what EPDs are based on, it's that individual animal's own performance, the, the level of performance it achieved in something like birth, weaning, or yearling weight in the contemporary group it was raised in. And it is also based on every other animal that shares pedigree relationship in the registry to that particular animal's performance in their contemporary groups. So if we think all ancestral records, all progeny that comes from a particular parent, as well as aunts, uncles, sibs, half sibs, everything that shares pedigree relationships, performance also impacts our genetic prediction and the EPD of that particular animal. In the last 15 years, we also take genomics into account in generating EPDs. This is where we submit a DNA sample to our breed registry. We take a look at that DNA and identify genes that impact specific polygenic quantitative traits, which also are gonna have an impact on that genetic prediction. So along with each EPD, we see an accuracy reported that's commonly gonna be abbreviated in your SIRE summary as ACC. Accuracies range from zero to one, and they are there to tell us how much information has been taken into account in the generation or calculation of that EPD. And accuracy values that get closer to one mean that we base those on more information or more information has been taken into account in the calculation of that genetic value and we can put more reliability in it. Again, as we think about animals that become parents, sire or produce a lot of progeny, animals that have been genomically tested, we're gonna to start to see accuracies that get up there closer to one. If we think about an example of how to use EPDs and for all the statistics and the long-term record keeping that go in and give us modern genetic prediction, that is more accurate than ever before that we have available to us in the beef industry, EPDs are very straightforward in how to use them. If we take the trade of weaning weight, for example, and we compare two bulls, let's say we've got Sire A, who has a weaning weight EPD of 65, and compare him to Sire B with a weaning weight EPD of 50, we take those two bulls and mate them to the same set of cows, we expect to see about 15 pounds heavier weaned calves in the sire group from sire A. So that's our overview of genetic prediction and EPDs. Look forward to seeing you again next week on Cow-Calf Corner.